Hello, my name is Doreen Ellen Bill Dotan in Svat in Israel. Um, I'd like to speak about uh, the real New World Order, what's been happening, and explain what's going on in the world and on planet Earth, which is no longer just planet Earth. It's, we're actually merging. Uh, with the other planets. It's one of the things that I'm going to speak about. <clears throat> We're also merging with the Sun, uh, which is good news and bad news considering how nice you've been. Um, and uh, please God will speak about that too. Um, many of you have seen that for years um, I've been writing uh, things in Hebrew with numbers and showing different um, values and, and different ways in which those values can be interpreted. Hebrew is an alphanumerical language and because all numbers have infinite um, substitution values, there are infinite interpretations of Torah in Hebrew. Um, and Though many of them have appeared to be uh, instructive, and they are certainly intended to be instructive, uh, it was actually more than that. Um, what they are is overwrite. Um, we have been um, rewriting reality for a number of years. And enough of that has already gone into effect so that we are seeing the effects in, in nature. And it's time to talk about it. Um, what you all call the matrix is, is actually uh, the Hebrew Torah. And um, we haven't changed the script of, of Torah as it is. What we've done is uh, revealed... <coughs> deeper levels of interpreting it such that the interpretation um, is more in line with with Hashem's original vision. It's still not perfect. It's, it's an ongoing project, but uh, a lot of major changes have been made and you all are seeing the effects. Um, by this time, uh, the scientists have thrown their hands up and said there are things we don't understand. And uh, that Q identity, whatever it is, whether it's uh, a LARP or it's real or whatever it is, has uh, said, uh, hey, this wasn't supposed to happen, suppose, not supposed, which means that he kind of lost his composure. <laughs> Um, so the scientists and military intelligence and all of them um, are well aware that uh, Earth is no longer under their control, that um, the physical laws are not what they expected and things that they didn't think could be are. <clears throat> There's so much to tell, I don't know if I'll be able to get it into one video, so let me explain the very basics. The very basics are this. Um, the name Chava, which is uh, pronounced Eve in English, is actually uh, one of the values of her name is New World, Olam Chadash, is a value of 1018, which is the same thing as the value of 19, which is the value of the name Chava. So she actually is, her creation actually is the creation of a new world. And that's what we're seeing happening. <clears throat> One of the things that we have to understand about Torah is that um, what appears to us to have been events that occurred in the past, um, all of that is, 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 is eternally true. There is no past, present, and future uh, in Torah. It's, Torah is an eternal. Um, when we do not want to accept things, we dissociate from them and put them in the past or when <clears throat> interests would like us to have us dissociated from certain knowledge, 
it's made to sound like something that happened in the past or something that has not happened yet. When I was reading the books of the prophets, um, I asked Hashem, all of this is written in the future. When does that future come? And I received an amazing answer. The answer I got was, on the day that you're willing to accept it. And I said, okay, today is that day. And the answer that I got was, okay, for you it's now in effect. And I said, well, that's good for me, but what about for the rest of the world? There is a whole world of suffering people out there. And Hashem said, well, you have the right to share it with those who want it. And that's what's happening. The world is changing. The kingdom of David is not the way we have been taught by the rabbis. There will be no monarch uh, ascending uh, a, a physical throne and sending out commandments and <clears throat> being an autocrat. That's not what the kingdom of David looks like. The name David, which is equal to 14, means Ohev, which is one, the one who loves, and also Ahuv, the one who is loved. And one of the um, important Substitution values for the name David is Bat Torah, which is equal to 100, uh, 1013, which is the same thing as 14, uh, which means the daughter of Torah, and also you are pregnant with a daughter. The being David is not a male. It is comprehensive. In the kingdom of David, the ones who love the most are the sovereigns. What's important to understand is what the throne is. Throne in Hebrew is uh, the value 81. Kise is 81, which is also Anochi, which means I. I am. That is the same I am that opens up the Ten Commandments. That is the kise. And it is also equal to the, the word teva, which means nature. Those who ascend to the throne become able to control the laws of nature. Chok teva, which is law of nature, is equal to the word tzedek, which I've told you is righteousness. And it's also the name of the planet that is called Jupiter in, 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 uh, in the Christian languages, various forms of Jupiter. <coughs> the name Jupiter is actually an etymon of a Hebrew word, which is Peter. Um, Peter is the name Peter. <laughs> it is the firstborn. Firstborn of God is righteousness. It is also equal to nolad ba'aretz, which means born on earth, and also yadua ba'aretz, which means known on earth, and also hove'ad ba'aretz, which means dwells on earth forever. So tzedek, the planet Jupiter, and earth are now merging. We're also merging with the other planets. Um, I would refer you to the wonderful work of a YouTube um, uh, a user by the name of Mr. MBB333. He has wonderful uh, views, and I've already mentioned Dutch since. Um, both of them show very, very important uh, information, which although it's anomalous, they don't start tripping on it. 
and um, they've been speaking about this alignment of the planets on one side of the sun that they're all lining up and actually it's not just lining up but it means that they're getting in sync with one another and they aren't in in um, each going their own way on their own orbit kind of a thing uh, connected but but independently they're starting to coordinate the choreography and that is actually going to culminate in a, a merging of all of the different planets and the Sun. Um, the name Sun in Hebrew is Shemesh, which is related to Shamash, which means the one who serves. Um, and also a, a, a light on, on, a, on a candelabrum. So this is the light that serves. It's equal to HaYehudim, which is the Jews. It's 640. It's also equal to Enecha, which is your eyes, and Panecha, which is your face. It, this is the, the light that is going to be um, revealed, that is being revealed. We're already seeing anomalous uh, changes in the sun, the way the sun is interacting with the earth, I want you to understand this is not NASA and DARPA and they have already been totally taken under control. Um, they tried to, to do all kinds of things, uh, but when you get signals like you saying, hey, this isn't supposed to happen, <laughs> and um, the, the, the meteorologists on Hawaii saying scientists cannot explain um, what they're saying is they, they know that um, they're, they know what their place is and they know that, that they're not at the top of, of the decision-making uh, hierarchy. Um, what is Earth? What is it to have the privilege of living on Earth? One of the substitution values for the earth is emuna. Emuna has been wrongly translated as faith. There is no word for faith in the Hebrew language. Emuna is not faith. Emuna, this is all the word amen, also comes from this, means one who has worked something, an aman, and it's also trustworthiness and steadfastness and loyalty. Emuna is about those who have worked on themselves to become trustworthy and loyal and dependable. The earth that we are walking on is the realization of all of those throughout all of the generations' efforts to become dependable. And that means to become really real. Not to live in a spiritual realm, not to live in a, an imaginary realm, to be really, really real, to be able to put your foot down on it, to touch it. The earth, not the heavens, is the holiest of holies. It is God's will that has been made real. And those who understand that to be on earth is a privilege are going to be the ones who are going to inherit this earth. Anavim Yeshueretz, the meek, the humble will inherit the earth. And if we accept this upon us, then this has already become true. And that means we have already inherited the earth. Those who don't love earth, that it's not good enough for them, that they want something more, are going to be in other realms. It is already being worked out. Uh, in fact, the people who shouldn't be treading on earth because they don't know how to tread gently 
and with the requisite awe and respect and mutual mutuality are not going to be able to touch earth anymore. They're going to be all um, quantumly entangled. Um, those who want that, that's the world that they're going to get, and uh, it's good for them. Those who thought that they were going to um, conquer the earth with force are also going to find themselves um, zoned out and unable to make contact with earth. You have misunderstood what the end times means. Ba'acharit hayamim, which is the real expression. First of all, ba'acharit should not be translated as in the end. Ba'acharit is the value of hayom, which means today. So ba'acharit hayamim is today is the, is the days. This is it. Acharit is related to another word which means which is chayrut, which means freedom. Those are the days of ultimate freedom for those who have merited it. If you look at Earth, you're seeing that these are very, very different experiences depending upon what we have wanted for others. You know that, that symbolism of people all sitting around at a, a feast table and they have the long cutlery, you know, the long spoons, and each one is feeding the other? Well, it really is that way. What you wanted for others is what you get. You get it for yourself and you get to see others having what you wanted. If it's good, you just get it for yourself if what you've wanted for others is not so good. I want to tell you something straight up, boys and girls. If you've been an evangelical Christian and you think that you took God's, Israel's place in God's heart, if you spread, spread slander about the God of Israel, committing suicide, murder, torture to save the world, if you've meditated on tribulations, if you've said things and wanted in your heart for others who don't believe the way you do, that they're going to go to everlasting hell, I've got news for you, boys and girls. The FEMA boats are all the way are already on the way to Hawaii. You get what you wished for others. Why was Hawaii singled out? What's going on in Hawaii? First of all, the paradise of Hawaii will be returned to those natives who loved Hawaii and treasured Hawaii and protected Hawaii until the invaders got there and tortured those people and stole their land and forced them to, 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 to take on Christianity. They will have their Hawaii back. The name Hawaii is the closest name of a place to the name Hawaii or Hawaii, which is the way in which we are allowed to pronounce God's name. So what God is saying to you is, stop calling me Jesus. You may call me Hawaii. You may call me Hawaii. Do not call me Jesus. Do not wave pictures of, of, of bloody tatters on a cross in front of me. Do not make me look upon that. And if you do, It'll be hell to pay. You're already paying for that sin. The name, the, the word Aloha is very close to God's name, Eloah. And um, it's interesting that the, the, the leaders in Hawaii are called the Kahuna. Kahuna is exactly the, the, the priesthood. In, in Hebrew. These are all Hebrew terms. So what Hashem has said in choosing Hawaii to make that uh, volcano blow up 
is first of all, Hashem is saying to you, my name is, is, is Halvaya. That's what you may call me. You may not call me Jesus. Number two, God is saying, my name is Aloha. Number three, God is saying that the hell that you wished on others is coming to you. And that volcano has already shown you that it has no respect for how much money you have. It doesn't care whether you are a quote-unquote lowly renter or somebody who lives in one of those gated communities. It's going to burn you. Whether It doesn't matter who you are. It's already swallowing that... that um, uh, read that 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 geothermal nightmare there it has no respect for your money whatsoever it has no respect for your power it is laughing at you that is being done to show the industrialists the military industrial complex all the all NASA who's boss the God of Israel is was and always will be boss and that is the the message that you are getting from Hawaii. But as the seismologists and, and, and geologists already know, it's not just in Hawaii, is it, boys and girls? No, it's not. It's all over the planet. Everything is being shifted around and volcanoes are becoming active all over. And I'm going to tell you what, it is not the same experience for everybody. It's your interpretation. If you thought that you were going to take over the world with your robots and your nanotechnology, and you were in every generation, they made the same mistakes. The generation that created the spear was absolutely sure, or or the the, the <coughs> what do you call it, boomerang. They were absolutely sure that they had created the. At the, the, the last word in technology and they were going to take over humanity with it. Every generation of fools makes the same mistake. It's always the same. They give you like words you've never heard before and it all sounds so like above everybody else and all that. <laughs> you may think that quantum entanglement is the last word in 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 the knowledge of how the universe works. It's not. It's just the last level of how your mind's going to be blown to kingdom go. And the meek will inherit this beautiful earth. And for us it's going to be returned to a place that is going to be paradise. It will be a safe place. It will be a haven. It will be creative and 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 there will there will be limitless ability to to develop and create and 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 use matter in in in, in myriad ways and in, in endless ways in ways that don't hurt anyone or anything one of the biggest changes that is already occurring is that there is no more inanimate matter. Matter is not um, unresponsive anymore. It is not um, apathic anymore. It, it is not indifferent anymore. The mirror of creation has been cleaned and has been perfected and when you gaze into matter, it's going to read you, it'll scan you instantly, and what you get back is going to be exactly what is in your soul. Matter has now become a perfect mirror for your intentions, for your real desires. What you wish is what you are going to get. This is the true New World Order. It's immense, whether it is immensely wondrous or immensely cataclysmic will depend entirely upon you. It's your choice. And there is going to be no rapture after this, folks. This goes on and on and on. We have already walked into eternity. 
You can always turn around and say, okay, I've been wrong, enough pain, I want to go the right way. There's no such thing as eternal hell that you can't ever get out of. You can always, always turn around. And my suggestion to the Christians is to please know that you have been wrong. Because I promise you, Earth is now reading you. Not as you wish to, to look to the world, but as you really are. And from now on, to be an evangelical Christian with hate in your heart and think that other beings don't have the right to joy because they don't believe what you believe is going to be hell to pay for that. This is a promise. Now, the good news is that the world has come under the natural laws of the mothers of Israel. They are the ones who are in charge of what happens in the creation. They are the final authority. God is in the level of Ein Sof. Of course, these mothers are already or, or, always praying to Ein Sof, always interfacing with Ein Sof. This is what it is. They interface with Ein Sof. They receive God's will from God on the level of being totally uncreated, they interface with that and relay it to the creation. They are now fully, fully in charge. The world is now going to be um, Hanhaga. How do you say Hanhaga Lanhig? To be directed. Ha, ah, I got it. The world is now going to be directed by the wisdom of the wisest mothers who have ever been. Welcome to the New World Order. Um, please, if you wish to, contact me with me on Facebook. Um, the best way to do it is to probably send me a message. I'm checking my messages um, so that I can get an idea of who you are and then I can know whether or not um, I feel that at this point we, we have common ground to talk about. Uh, the best way to contact me on Facebook is not just to send a friend's uh, request, but to, to give me some idea of where you're coming from. Thank you for listening.